Yeah, and and actually, just to let you know, she uh, emailed uh, the person emailed that they can see it fine now. They did it. Okay, right. great. Oh, okay, perfect. You know. Well, there you go. <laughs> so, if anyone else has that problem, those are the some some solutions that you can try. Um, so, moving on, there in the broadcast louder series, there will be more talk on pay per click Facebook ads. For example, the next webinar that we're doing on March 28th, which is going to focus on best marketing strategies in general. There's going to be a section on pay-per-click ads, and Facebook ads will be mentioned as well as Google ads. So the reason, well, we're going to briefly address this because it's going to tie in nicely with with our strategy here for Facebook marketing. What you want to do when you when you buy a Facebook pay-per-click ad is you want to keep people on Facebook because Facebook is going to charge you less per click than if you send them off of Facebook. And there's another new advertising feature called Sponsored Stories. Those are even cheaper than pay-per-click Facebook ads that are in the sidebar. They're also in the sidebar, but they're more like stories that you post and you can sponsor them, sponsor tags, and they are actually a cheaper rate and get a higher interaction rate as well, so that might be another option for you. But let's say we do a Facebook pay-per-click ad. Before, you could take them to a landing page. But now there's no more default landing page. But the great thing about the new apps, formerly known as custom tabs, is that you can link directly to an app. Now this is great because Facebook is helping people who do it right do it more effectively and have higher conversion rates. Because what we can do now is we can design some app slash pages to be the new landing pages, conversion pages, aka squeeze pages, so that you can generate leads from your landing pages. And the way that you should be doing it anyways. As a quick little as a quick little aside, just to give you a, a little bonus tip, whenever you're doing a pay-per-click campaign, you're spending money. So obviously whenever you spend money, you want to maximize the opportunity to get the return on that investment. So you always want to send a pay-per-click to a conversion page where you can either convert them into a lead or a sale. So you never want to send a pay-per-click to your timeline because you can't get anything out of that other than maybe a like. You want to maximize your ROI. Same thing if you buy a Google ad, you never want to send a pay-per-click to your homepage website. You want to send them all to a landing page, a specific landing page. We'll get all into that in two weeks when we talk about pay-per-click in much more detail. But for now, so if we do a great campaign, we're getting a lot of clicks, where are they going to go? We don't want them to our timeline like we just established, so we're going to create an app that we're going to use as a landing page. So you can have as many as three apps revealed in your timeline, and you'll see that when we get into the next slide. Um, you can change your thumbnail of any of these apps. So even the apps that are pre-existing that you might have gotten from a third party that you're maybe paying $10 up to $30 a month for, you can change those thumbnails in most cases. Some cases, depending on how the app was coded, it may not be completely 100% functional with the new Facebook timeline. But anything you create, absolutely, you can totally customize now in ways that are beyond what you could do before. Once you see the stuff that we're going to suggest, no one's doing the stuff, and this is absolutely the best way to maximize your marketing um, ROI. So your cover image isn't visible when you actually send people to an app. So now you have a pay-per-click ad. People have clicked that. They go to your landing page. They go to your app. And there's no more nice, pretty cover photo. So we're going to tell you how to get around that and how to not lose your branding. And we're also, besides, here's the most important thing. We're going to tell you some marketing strategies on how to use Facebook's timeline. But really, when it comes down to it, besides great content, apps are the best way to stand out from the crowd. So... Number one, you always have to have great content. You have to have great relationships with the people who like your page, and you have to keep pumping out quality content because that is prime number one because that's what Facebook is still great for is you're building a relationship with people. So best practices is we're going to create custom apps. We're going to use these apps as landing pages for our pay-per-click ads, and we're going to place our branding on the top of all apps because let's show you what it looks like if you didn't do that. As you see right here, this is an, a pre-modeled circle marketing landing page where you get to get our free ebook. Yay, sign up. 
and you get 40 modern marketing strategies and techniques to help you grow your business. But when they come here, what do they see? They see maybe the logo on the page, but we lose our branding. So our solution for that is since we're creating the page anyways, we put a nice little branding up top there. So now when they come here, they not only see the logo, but now they see a couple of other links, and we're going to talk about that because that is where the new the power of apps really comes in. Uh, let's talk about the different types of apps you can create. You can do an About Us app. These are formerly what landing pages were. They used to be you know, just something that they land on and say, hey, like my page, and great, this is my brand. So you can still have that. I wouldn't use these as landing pages from, like we said before, um, they, they can't, you can't convert anyone off of here. So the next type of page, the app that we can do is the lead generation app that you saw a preview of. We want to use this mostly for pay-per-click ads when you direct people here. You want to be able to get them on your list. You want to be able to help them if you're offering a product. And we're going to show you another great thing in a few minutes about how to actually get sales from these new apps. So the big functionality here that I'd like to talk about now is the top banner right there where you saw that there's links. Well, the links allow us to have cross-app connectivity. So if you want to – if you – land on our lead generation page, and you say, you know, I kind of want the book, but maybe I want to find out more about what this company is about. Well, there's the About link right there. The reason why we do that is let me go back for one second just so it blows up a little bit more. If you look where it says free ebook next to your name, in the case your name is Circle Marketing, that is your new navigation. You drop that down, and that's where you navigate through all the different apps. Obviously, that's not the most intuitive way to do this. So what we're suggesting is that if you, since you're creating the app anyways, create your own branding, your own links, so you keep people within your page, you help brand your page properly, and this helps you cross-connect the different app pages that you have. Another app is a like to review, which is also called a fan gate. Fan gates weren't working the first day that Facebook did a little trial version, so people are afraid that it might go away, but it's not going away. Fan gates absolutely still work. And it, what, for those who don't know, what a fan gate is, is basically a like to reveal the offer. For example, we put up a page. We encourage them to like the page. And in exchange, they will receive whatever the offer is. In this case, Elisa is offering a free download for one of her great songs. Now, if you remember, the cover image could not use a call to action as far as like this page. However, we can do that on our app. There's no restrictions at all. And this works out nicely, as you see right there, a nice little arrow pointing right to the like button so that they are doubly encouraged to like if the song wasn't enough for them. So now you see we've revealed, we've liked the page, we reveal the button to download the song and enjoy her wonderful music. Now, the next type of app we can create is an actual store right inside. Now, the, the, say like Moonlight Graham has a store in their website. They spent a lot of money on their e-commerce site. They want to monetize that. Every time that someone clicks on the Internet and you make them do another click, you're going to lose some traffic. There's going to be some fall off. So we want to minimize the amount of clicks, maximize the opportunity to get that person from where they are, to where you'd like them to be to make that purchase as quickly and efficiently as possible. So now you can do a pay-per-click campaign and send them directly to this app, and we can actually embed an entire website within this app. Now, there's a couple of restrictions around that. For example, uh, Facebook apps do have a maximum width, which is 810 pixels wide. I'd suggest 800 if you're going to design a page specifically to go into the Facebook app and host it. This is great because you still get the cheaper pay-per-click rate that you would have gotten by keeping people on Facebook because technically you're keeping people on Facebook, yet you're also bringing them to your site as long as your site is either 800 pixels wide or 100% width or it's a responsive theme. Then it will expand to whatever width is possible uh, is presented. Yes. Louis, I have a question here. 
What, okay. what would be the advantage of having this full site and, and, and with the shopping and everything rather than the original site that's on the web? I mean, other than the 850 million daily users. <laughs> the 850 million daily users? You know, on, on Facebook. So I'm saying, but what would oh. be the advantage of having the shopping cart and the whole site here over just having it in their regular website? Well, uh, you know. actually, the great thing here is that this is the website. This actually is their website. Their shopping page is embedded within the Facebook app. So the advantage to that is that you don't have to create something new. You're, you're paying minimal money to create the app as long as your page, your web page, your shopping cart is within the parameters of the timeline, it won't break. It will still embed even if it's a 1,000 pixels wide, but then you're going to get scroll bars. It's not going to be a good experience, and it's not a way to go. You don't want to do something that's not going to fit. Okay, so, if it's what would, so then what would someone do if they had a website that was, let's say, 960 pixels wide? If it's would they 960 create a new version? No, um, you could you could create a new version. If you want to embed it in a Facebook timeline, then yes, you're going to have to modify it and somehow. Um, these days, a lot of web pages should be responsive, which means that depending on the viewing device, because there's tablets, there's mobile phones, there's monitors, there's laptops of all different sizes, you should probably think about getting a responsive, a responsive website model that will automatically adjust to whatever viewing screen the user is viewing you on. So well, assuming you don't have that, let's say you're a smaller business, just paid a lot of money for your e-commerce and they hard-coded it, you don't want to do this, well, this might not be the best solution for you. But the advantage to doing this is that you're getting a cheaper pay-per-click because they're coming through your on your Facebook because obviously you're keeping them on Facebook. So you're getting a little bit easier to get um, your cost per conversions down. Great. Now we go over to Facebook marketing will be touched within Susan and Broadcast Louder's series. There's a, a five lesson series that's coming up after our free webinar on the 28th. And one of the, one of the instructors there, guests, is going to be talking about social media. But here's just some general, you know, mile high viewpoints on Facebook marketing in general, since we're talking about timeline marketing. The quality of content and stories are more important than ever. Because most people, they get their news from the pages that they like through their news feed. They get their updates through their news feed. Very rarely do people actually are going to seek out every single brand that they're interested in. So the way to keep people engaged, the way to keep people interested in your product, the way to keep building that relationship is by coming up with quality content all the time. And by quality content, I don't mean using the old marketing method of blasting out, buy my product, buy my product, buy my product. You want to build a relationship with people just like you always have been told recently on Facebook. This is social media. This is where you go and you kind of mingle with people, develop relationships. This is the place that you develop that relationship by continuously giving quality content. 